Hi, everyone. My name is Chris Gavitter. I'm here with Dr. Sharif Ibrahim. We'd like to welcome you to another video on high blood pressure. Uh, if you haven't watched the previous one, go have a listen to that. We uh, talked about a lot of really great things, especially when it came to fruit and dried fruit. Sharif, let's jump straight back into the conversation we had in the previous video and continue to talk about foods that aren't great. And in this case, it's beef and how it actually can cause inflammation. Thank you, Chris. Uh, when we talk about meat and metabolic syndrome, meat increases insulin, but it does not increase its blood sugar. That is very interesting here because you see, when you increase insulin, then most of the calories uh, you have ingested is going to be uh, stored as fat. Uh, and when we have a more fat storage, then we are calling for inflammation. And when we call for inflammation, that is going to worsen the uh, blood sugar control and causes more insulin resistance. And more insulin resistance is going to fuel a full-blown metabolic syndrome. The issue here, we should really be careful about how much are we going to consume every time. Uh, the recommendation actually for uh, daily meat intake should be around 60 gram of meat, which is the size of the palm. But if you're going to swap meat for nuts, for example, then that nuts contain a polyunsaturated fat, which is known to be protective against metabolic syndrome and associated diseases like high blood pressure. Now, that's something I've done. I've converted off of red meat for the most part, and I eat uh, quite a bit of nuts, actually. What used to be my candy cabinet is now full of a variety of different nuts from cashews to almonds. The other thing that I've done is, and this is something you and I have discussed, is I've replaced it with beans. So let's talk a little bit about that advantage of moving away from so much red meat and using beans. Beans is a better option. It's very good because you get carbs and you get proteins and you get fiber, which have positive effect on the metabolic syndrome. So let's shift gears now and talk about dairy. This is something, again, that was heavily involved in my life at one time, very big ice cream eater and milk in my cereal and Greek yogurt. There are a lot of issues with dairy. There are quite a few studies comparing meat and dairy. And unfortunately, dairy were found to be worse than meat. When a study actually described that having 35 grams of casein, which is the dairy protein, is enough to spike your insulin after an overnight fast. So I think dairy is not really a very good thing. If you want to avoid a dairy, you can go for non-dairy products, but you have to be very careful because many of them has got added sugar, which is going to worsen the control of the metabolic syndrome and associated diseases. Yeah, you really want to take a minute and read the labels. When we were getting off of dairy and we ended up going to coconut-based and there's almond-based, they show it as a whole healthy alternative. They're actually in the health food store. But when you turn and read the labels, sometimes the labels on the alternative is worse than the dairy as far as there's more sugar. There's all these things added to try to make it taste better. If you find the right product, they're great. It's just pure. And that's what you're looking for. Now, I will caution you that in most cases, you are going to pay a premium for these healthier alternatives. I often say we'll go out and buy these fancy clothes and spend thousands of dollars a year on shoes and clothes and then throw them out. But we'll get upset because we have to pay a dollar or a pound more for a higher quality food that is going into our bodies. And so once you get your head wrapped around that, spending a little extra money to ingest a higher quality product is a lifetime investment. Sharif, we've talked about beef and dairy. And again, one of those silent killers, one of the main issues are the fats associated with beef and dairy. Yeah, I think you're talking about saturated fats. And actually, saturated fats are really very interested here. It was found to change our microbiome. The good, the beneficial gut bacteria will be changed because saturated fat is going to increase the bad bacteria that produce a toxin called LBS, the lipopolysaccharide. 
and lipopolysaccharides causes inflammation and inflammation uh, causes insulin resistance and that is going to worsen the metabolic uh, syndrome. On the other hand, it decreases those type of bacteria that produce short chain fatty acids and short chain fatty acids are the best for the gut because you see it repairs the gut and it's best for other body organs, particularly the liver, and their ben benefits can go up to the brain. So we try to avoid this saturated fat if you would like to control your metabolic syndrome and high blood pressure. On the other hand, saturated fat is going to cause inflammation of the part of the brain called hypothalamus, which is the energy control center. That is going to change our satiety and often result in a series of hunger, which is going to make us eat more, gain weight, and that is going to worsen our metabolic syndrome, including high blood pressure. Sharif, as always, great content again today. Thank you, everyone, for listening to today's video. We look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care. Sharif and I appreciate you liking this video, and more importantly, remember to subscribe to this channel. There's a lot of content that we're going to be creating, and we don't want you to miss a single second of it.